we are starting with uh, uh, the the women's side. Uh, I'm I'm gonna cry a little bit now because uh, uh, Simo Simona Halep yeah. uh, uh, left the building, and uh, <laughs> what a, what a match from uh, Taylor Townsend there. I, I think that. Uh, I don't want to say I don't want to say nothing about her looks and about uh, her rhythm of playing. But uh, anyway, great match from uh, Taylor Townsend. Um, what do you think about uh, that uh, that huge huge upset, uh, James? Uh, yeah, as you say, excellent match. Um, felt like Halep was a little bit slow, perhaps, but but yeah, it's hard to do a lot when you get caught cold like that, especially over the best of three. Um, you feel like it's the big advantage of having the five sets in the men's as they can really sort themselves out. Um, but yeah, just an excellent match from Townsend. Yeah, I remember she said uh, in the press conference after the match that uh, last time when uh, uh, Halep destroyed her, uh, she asked her after the match, uh, uh, how should I play next time uh, when uh, I will uh, play, you know? And uh, Halep was very nice and she said... Uh, she said to her some stuff and uh, imagine that uh, she played exactly like uh, Halep said. And this is how she beat her. And Halep said yeah. after the, at the press conference that I will never say. And uh, if I'm losing, <laughs> I, if I'm destroying an opponent and if they will ask me again, how should I play against you? I will never say nothing because uh, this is what uh, is happening. And uh, unfortunately, she lost. But anyway, on the women's side, uh, the draw is uh, perfect. Uh, um, because uh, we don't know who is going to win this uh, uh, this tournament. is wide open, and we have some interesting matches today and tomorrow. Uh, Maria Sakkari, Ashley Barty are playing right now. Barty uh, winning, uh, uh, winning, leading in the first set 4-2. Uh, uh, Martic beating Sevastova. Sevastova was uh, one of uh, nice bets, uh, I think, that in the last round uh, she came good. Uh, but uh, right now, uh, she might uh, lose against the Sevastova. Some interesting matchups tonight. Um, some of them, uh, I, will, uh, say to the, uh, I will say to them, uh, Kenan versus Kiz. I think that this is one of the most interesting matches. Svitolina, Yastremska, uh, two um, players from Ukraine. Uh, Christy Ann versus Ostapenko. I think that uh, this should be in for a thrilling match. Also, I'm going with the underdog here at 2.55. I will, I will take Christy Ann. Um, uh, James took her against the Kuznetsova at 5.0, and uh, it was a winning bet. Contavate versus Bencic, and uh, so on. But the most, uh, one of the most uh, interesting matches tomorrow also Osaka versus uh, Coco Guff. Uh, it will be absolutely uh, sensational match. I think that Osaka will uh, will beat her after all, but it it will be nice. So uh, it's nice. Tell us a little bit about uh, this draw, and uh, we will talk after uh, about the best bets for this round. Uh, yeah. So as you said, there uh, Taylor Townsend uh, knocked off Simona Halep in a massive upset. Uh, she was really outplayed in the first set largely i played didn't really stand a chance from the baseline uh so she switched things up uh which was very noticeable she started coming forward to the net extremely aggressively played a lot of server and volley and really just tried to get an edge over halep because she knew she could contend from the baseline and she did that with kind of a lot of success i think the halep's forehand in particular went missing and she could not trust it at all in key moments quite a lot of poor attempts at passing shots and errors uh, from her in the key moments but not to take anything away from Townsend, who really executed her game plan perfectly and played some really gutsy tennis. Uh, she was broken serving for the match, saved the match point, and then came back to win it uh, in the end anyway. So a really strong performance from from, uh, from Townsend there. And uh, yeah, I mean, I was expecting Andreescu, uh, which is my outright pick pre-tournament, to uh, have to face Halep uh, to get uh, you know to the semifinals. But she's not going to have to now. So the draw is opening up very, very nicely. Uh, and then in the bottom half, uh, another big player who I think was really impressive uh, in the previous round, uh, Arina Sabalenka lost. That was unexpected to me. She was playing really well in the first round win, uh, but she also went down. So, uh, yeah, you know, classic yeah. WTA, just seeds getting tossed out left and right, draws opening up. We don't really know who's going to win it, but uh, yeah, it's looking pretty nice. Uh, 
consistency well, yes, consistency is the key uh, to this uh, sport and uh, many many young uh, um, and talented players like Zabalenka for example they don't have the cons- necessary consistency to uh, play yes they can uh, uh, they can play against any opponent and if they have a good day they might win them all but after that in the in the next round uh, they might have a problem and lose this match that match in a bad in bad fashion anyway OJ Simpson is saying like you said uh, really uh, draw really opening up for uh, Andreescu um, he likes Muchova a lot today against Serena Williams and he thinks that he she might take a, a set uh, Serena Williams uh, already lost, uh, I think, that two sets uh, uh, so far, uh, or, or one, no, one, one set uh, so far. Uh, thousand is the Dustin Brown of the WTA. I like that comment, yeah, probably. Um, uh, James, what do you think about uh, this uh, much of a Serena? Do you have an opinion on this one? Do you think that Serena might lose a set? Do you think that Muchova has any chance to pull off a huge, huge upset here? Because right now, uh, everybody is saying that uh, Serena can win uh, this uh, tournament. Uh, also, after the upsets that uh, we've seen uh, in the um, in the last uh, past uh, few days. So, uh, yeah, what do you think about that? Uh, yeah, so I think most of the top players, um, most of the sort of better players, the top 100, top 50, will have chances against Serena if they play well enough. Um, I'm not sure if I would pick much of her personally to to take her on with. Um, but yeah, I mean, I think Serena's vulnerable. I, I think she's still being fairly reliant on her serve and on her ability to just overpower players. So if someone pushes back with good defense or is able to just play very well on their own serve as well, I think they'll have they'll have every chance uh, to take a set. Yeah, and the price is uh, very, very good uh, for that uh, to happen. What do you think, Nice? Uh Yeah. I personally wouldn't say that Muchova would be my pick as well to put Serena with, but uh, definitely think that she can if she plays well, uh, which she has this week thus mm-hmm. far, can definitely threaten, uh, perhaps push Serena, you know, get a long set, get an over bet in, maybe take even take a set. Uh, but I, I still think Serena will have uh, the pedigree and the play to to get through there. Uh, I think that she'll freshen up a bit on her unforced error. She's been a bit of a slow starter thus far in the tournament. I think that. Uh, as usually is the case with Serena, she plays herself into form, usually starts a bit slow, has a few wobbles here and there in tournaments, and then when she gets going, uh, gets them old legs running, then uh, uh, she's a threat. So uh, I do think that she gets through Muchova here. Uh, I'd say the quarterfinals, when she gets there, looking like it's going to be Ashley Barty, that, that's where things get dicey for her, I think. Yeah, probably. I don't know. You 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 can expect anything. Exactly what we 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 talked on the women's side. Anything might happen. Also, Serena might lose today. Anything might happen. Mm-hmm. But this is why why uh, uh, we are doing this uh, uh, for every round uh, to get in profit at the end. Uh, to to finish in profit at the end of the tournament. So um, let's talk about uh, your favorite. Uh, bets for um, for this uh, round three and i will start uh, with you james many many good clashes really tough to pick up a winner um most of all on the women's side what do you have for us mm. um okay so i have two articles one of which you think is uh one of which is out one of which is probably going out tonight or tomorrow um so i'm going to go over those two women um so the first one was uh Yastremska against Svitolina and um, again it's always difficult with these kind of matches where you have a younger player that's playing very well uh, and starting to get priced shorter and shorter against a player who is a top quality player a top 10 player um, but has not been as good as the level that got them there Um, so yeah I think there's basically looking at this from the perspective of I think recent form is probably going to be one of the key factors here. And I think Yastremska is simply playing a lot better uh, overall than Svitolina is. Um, you can see it from several perspectives. So if you look at the hold, um, the service hold and break statistics, she is ahead, um, which again is suffi- surprising for an underdog. You tend to expect the favorites to be ahead in the sort of raw stats categories. In all of the ROI stats categories, 
you can see that again, Jastrzemska is well ahead, and Svitolina has actually been pretty good to bet against um, when she's been the favourite. And we see this with her; she's fairly inconsistent as as a player. Um, so that was the first one, um, Jastrzemska at uh, 2.65. Uh, the second one was actually the one you just mentioned. That was in my article, which I sent over uh, today, uh, which is Arn against Ostapenko. Um, and again, I, I agree with you. I think Arn is a, is a nice price for that one, uh, 2.55. Um, again, it's kind of a similar idea in that you've got uh, recent form being very, very important for this match. But also just Arn has been consistently a good player to bet against, um, against the better players. And I think this is because she's quite a tricky player, uh, she's also a player who has, uh, she's quite adaptable. She can do quite a few different things well. Um, so she's quite good at responding um, to the better players. And someone like Ostapenko is a clay specialist who's been in very poor form. Um, I think the key stat from the article that I wrote is that Ostapenko has actually only won three of her last 12 matches uh, priced at 1.5 to 2. So basically the, the price range she's in for this match going back to the beginning of 2018. So that's dreadful. Um, and you know, I would very much expect that she's going to have a tough match of it here. She had a good win last round over Risk, um, priced at three. But again, as I mentioned in the article, she had 17 break points against her and 10 break points. Uh, she generated 10 break points. So it, very, it was quite lucky for her to come through that match um, and certainly to come through in straight sets. I think she played very well at the key points and had a bit of luck go her way. Um, but yeah, so I think Jastrzemska, 2.65. And then on at two point five five uh, would be my plays. Well, you cannot say that Ostapenko is a clay court specialist. You cannot say that she's a specialist in any kind of uh, court. You know, I think that uh, <laughs> she's the. Sorry. She's a double thought specialist. Leads the tour, I think. <laughs> she's the, she's, a, dub, like she's a mental problem specialist, uh, uh, probably. Yeah. Um, Ostapenko. Yeah, but I think that she's talented. She has the talent. Uh, I never thought that she will uh, win a Grand Slam. She did it in and in what way she did it. But after uh, that, uh, she dropped huge, huge uh, in uh, in the tour. So, yeah, I don't, I'm not expecting uh, uh, nothing from Ostapenko. And when you have such a good price uh, for an underdog against Ostapenko, take it because it it has pure value, in my opinion. Uh, Snais, what do you think about uh, those two matches? Do you agree with, uh, uh, with uh, James? And also give us your take on your best bets of uh, round three for the WTA part. Uh, yeah, so as James has mentioned here in his bets, uh, makes a lot of sense. Uh, I don't necessarily think that uh, Diana Jastrzemska has it all to take down Svitolina. I think that after she's had her knee injury, she's uh, been getting progressively better, had a great run at Wimbledon, obviously making the semifinals. Uh, I think that Diana Jastrzemska uh, doesn't quite have the consistency over time to wear down the Svitolina defenses. She's a great kind of puncher. Uh, another concern for me is that Yastremska, she's third on the tour in double faults. She hits a lot of them, and her second serve and her serve often gets under a lot of pressure, and that will be telling against a great returner uh, like Svitolina. So the price is nice, but I do still think that Svitolina gets through. No bet there for me. Uh, the other match, I completely agree with you guys. I think that uh, Ostapenko is uh, well, well too, uh, too short in this match, and she might well lose. Uh, the bets I've gone for both go off tomorrow. And uh, one of them is Belinda Bensic, and she takes on Anet Kontaveit. Uh, so I was initially very surprised why um, the bookies made Belinda Bensic the underdog here. Best of these five hanging uh, a 2.0 line on the money line here for, for the Swiss. Uh, and yeah, so just to begin with, Swiss is 6.1% ahead in the hard uh, in the whole break stats for this year. Uh, she's over 50 points ahead in the hard court ELO, so statistically she is the superior player this year. I also think that she's had a better year than Annette has. Uh, she started off the year brilliantly, uh, making a good run at Indian Wells, among others, but she hasn't even made a quarterfinal since making uh, a Stuttgart final on clay in uh, April, so quite a while ago. Uh, she's a great mm -hmm ball striker and she packs a lot of power but she's extremely inconsistent and she's been eliminated here at the US Open uh, in the first round for three consecutive years 
uh, prior to this year's edition. So definitely vulnerable here. Doesn't really have a lot of experience going deep into this tournament. Uh, I mean, the Benchic, on the other hand, she's been white hot at the start of the year. She had a an amazing run to win Dubai and make the Indian Wells semifinals. She beat, I think, six top 10 players on the spin. Uh, so really got a bit of a reputation as a giant slayer there. Uh, she's a vicious counterpuncher. Uh, he's masterful at redirection, so I think she'll be able to handle whatever Estonia throws at her. Uh, I also think that a problem I have with Quantavate is that she's very, very mentally uh, weak in the pressure moments. She is quite whiny usually, can really get down on herself when things aren't going well. Her coach, Nigel Sears, is one of the best on tour and usually picks her back up. Uh, but as you know, encore coaching is not allowed uh, during Grand Slam tournaments. So she Grand won't Slam have Slam the Slam. help of her coach here if the going gets rough. So I feel that Belinda has that extra mental fortitude in the pressure moments, and I think that decides this game. So at the, as the underdog price, I have to take her here. Uh, so that's my first bet. Yeah, uh, it's a, it's a great take. Also, OJ uh, OJ Johnson is saying that um, Benchic versus Kontavit is very interesting. R- wrong player favored uh, in uh, his opinion. He prefers also Benchic Benchic to win uh, that match. So yeah, that makes a perfect sense. Yeah, uh, definitely agree with OG there. I think that the wrong woman is favored and Benji should be the favorite around 180 or so. So definitely take advantage of that underdog price. Uh, so on my second bat, it's a matchup between Bianca Andreescu and Karolina Wozniacki. Another really big match, uh, at least on paper. Uh, I'm going with Andreescu, minus two and a half games here at 180. Uh, so Andreescu's stellar year just continues, really. She's 30 and five this year, 85.7% win rate. Uh, she has all the tools to be the future world number one. She has the highest winning record on hard courts. Uh, she has a perfect 7-0 record against top 10 players. She just like, she has it all, and she, she just doesn't stop. Has two straight set victories here. Uh, and just continuing the great form that saw her win the Indy Wells title earlier this year and the Rogers Cup title uh, in the lead-up to yeah. US Open. Uh, Wozniacki, she's a former world number one. Uh, but she hasn't really been the same player. Mm-hmm. She was diagnosed um, with rheumatoid arthritis last year around this time, uh, which is uh, a disease that affects the limbs, causes swelling, causes pain uh, and discomfort. And it's very, very hard to actually perform as a top elite athlete. And very few actually are able to perform as well as she is doing with this serious disease that often can, if it's really bad, can cripple people and make it difficult for them to walk. So she often plays with a lot of pain. It can flare up at any moment, and it's definitely affecting her performances uh, ever since she got that diagnosis. Uh, she's fought well to win here. Two tough free set matches, which will sure to give her confidence. She's made the semifinals or better five times here before. Uh, mm-hmm. But in the last two years, she's been upset twice in the second round. And... Uh, yeah, I just don't think it'll be enough. Looking at it statistically, Andreescu is almost 200 points better in the hardcore ELO ratings, and that's huge. She's also 11% better in the whole break stats for this year, uh, and she has the game, most importantly, to take away Caroline's greatest strength, which is her defense and counterpunching. Uh, she won't overhit her shots. Uh, she won't crumble to the pressure that Wozniacki's defense often brings to younger, inexperienced players, and Andreescu is young and slightly inexperienced. Uh, but she's shown mental yeah. maturity far beyond her years in these situations. So I think she'll switch her up, drop shots, loopy balls, and then unleash the cannon on the Dane. And I think she'll win this match. Um, you took Andrescu at the beginning of the tournament. Uh, and uh, now how much the price dropped uh, for uh, her winning the entire tournament? Uh, I'll check. Give me one second here. I don't think the, the price is open right now, though, as the tournament is ongoing. Uh, but I'll see if we can get yeah, a, yeah. a live price. Uh, I doubt uh, it. We'll what see. do you think about uh, uh, this, uh, James? This uh, nice uh, match, Osaka versus Goff. Yeah, do you have up. an opinion on that? It's up. So Osaka sorry, is, what is sorry, the, the difference of the price? You, you, how much you took it Second and how much is now? now? I got her at 17 for tournament, and she's the second favorite behind Serena Williams now at 8 to win the tournament. So definitely a nice move there for us. Yeah, absolutely. So go on, James. Uh, you have anything on Osaka so, versus the Coco Golf? Yeah, so I agree with what you said at the start. I think it, you know, I think Coco is um, the kind of player that clearly enjoys the stage. 
Um, she's played well this week. And I would imagine that'll be tight. I think she'll push Osaka. I would probably expect Osaka to to be a bit too good. Um, but we have seen with Osaka that she's she's not quite as good as the elite players often are at um, adjusting when she's behind or just adjusting to slightly more awkward uh, matches or styles or you know, these kind of things. So I, w- I certainly wouldn't rule her out, Coco. Um, but yeah, I, I would expect Osaka. I probably wouldn't be getting involved with that match. I'd just lo- I'd enjoy watching it. Yeah, but, um, I think that it was a mistake uh, to uh, finish the contract with uh, her uh, former um, uh, coach. Uh, that is for Osaka because they were doing brilliant together and uh, this is why I think that she's struggling uh, right now on tour. This is what is happening also with... Uh, Simona Halep, despite winning the Wimbledon this year, she she still struggles without uh, Darren Cahill, and I think that uh, she will continue to do that. 